Science tells us that nothing in nature, even the tiniest particle, can disappear without a trace. So think about that for a moment, and once you do, your thoughts about life will never quite be the same. Hello my legend tripping tribe. Today we're going to do something just a little bit different. I'm going to do a countdown of the scariest places in America. The first one up is the Villisca, Iowa axe murders. Long before serial killers and mass murderers were a normal news item, two adults and six children were brutally murdered in their beds in the small town of Villisca, Iowa. On June 10th, 1912, a person or persons entered a modest house in Villisca, Iowa and bludgeoned to death the eight people sleeping there. The killings became known as the Villisca Axe Murders and are easily the most notorious murders in Iowa history. The Villisca Axe Murders would baffle law enforcement for over a century. On June 10th, 1912, the Moore family was sleeping peacefully in their beds Joe and Sarah Moore were asleep upstairs while their four children were resting in a room down the hall. In a ghost room on the first floor, there were two girls, the Stillinger sisters who had come for a sleepover. Shortly after midnight, a stranger entered the unlocked door and stole an oil lamp from a nearby table. In his other hand, he held an ax. Ignoring the sleeping girls downstairs, the stranger made their way up the stairs. He crept past the room with the children and into Mr. and Mrs. Moore's bedroom. Then he made his way to the children's room and finally back down to the bedroom downstairs. The next morning, the neighbors became suspicious. They alerted Joe's brother, who arrived to take a look. Everyone in the house was dead, all eight of them bludgeoned beyond recognition. It was determined that the Moore parents had been murdered first. The axe that had been used to kill them had been swung so high above the murderer's head that it gouged the ceiling above the bed. The faces of both parents, as well as the children, had been reduced to nothing but bloody pulp. All the victims were found in the bed, their heads covered with bedclothes, and all their skulls had been battered 20 to 30 times with the blunt end of an axe. After murdering the Moors, the killer had apparently set up some kind of ritual. There was quite a bizarre murder scene there. The killer added two very bizarre touches to the whole thing. The first was a four pound slice of slab bacon that was leaning against the wall near the axe that they had used. The murderer also had searched dresser drawers for pieces of clothing to cover the mirrors in the house. On the kitchen table was a plate of uneaten food and a bowl of bloody water. The police believed that the murderer had washed his hands in it before he left. Before the police could get a handle on the scene, at least a hundred townspeople traipsed through the blood-spattered home. Newspaper reporters and private detectives flooded the streets and accusations, rumors, and suspicion absolutely ran rampant among friends and families. Law enforcement agencies from neighboring counties and states joined forces. Hundreds of interviews filled thousands of pages. And residents huddled together in fear, yet the murders remain unsolved and unpunished, even to this day. Here's the list of the suspects, though. There was a Frank Jones who was a local businessman who had been in fierce competition with Joe Moore. There was the Reverend George Kelly. He was an English immigrant who had a weird history of sexual deviancy and mental problems. He even admitted to being in town the night of the Villisca Axe murders and admitted that he had left early in the morning. Reverend George Kelly left Villisca on board a westbound number five train and allegedly told fellow travelers that there were eight dead souls back in Villisca, Iowa. Now, at that time, <laughs> nobody had discovered the bodies yet. He also had a history with the Moore family. Many people had seen him watching them while at church and then watching them out and about town. A dry cleaner in a nearby town had received bloody clothing from Reverend Kelly a few days after the murders. He returned two weeks later and, posing as a detective, joined a tour of the murder house with a group of investigators. At one point, after a long interrogation, he eventually signed a confession detailing the crime. However, he almost immediately recanted and a jury refused to indict him. 
Soon reports of similar crimes happening with the use of an axe throughout the country began to pop up. However, no actual connections were ever made. The case eventually ran cold and the house was boarded up. Finally sold, now the house sits at the end of a quiet street as it always has, undeterred by the horrors that once committed within. But you know what? You can even go do an overnighter there. Wow, to me that is just such an incredible story. As many times as I have been to Iowa, I have never been to Valeska, Iowa, but I guarantee you the next time I'm on tour, I'm going there. Or maybe I could go there just to do another story about this. This story is a part of a top five countdown of the scariest places in America. This was the first one, the next one. Should I tell you? Okay, it's gonna be Amityville, so we're gonna do that one next. Okay, for sure. This is in no particular order. They're just the top five. Maybe you guys can vote which is the number one. If you want to be a contributor and help me out and videotape something and send it to me, maybe I can put it in a video and that could be kind of cool. Um, oh, and by the way, if you want to join my Patreon channel, I am doing a couple of stickers like this. Uh, it's Patreon slash Ricky Rocket. And if you're an early adopter, you get one of these stickers. So definitely check that out. Until next time. Thanks for coming along with me. Take care of each other. Keep rock alive. So if you like this video, give me a thumbs up, subscribe, and turn on your notifications so that you're notified when I upload new material.